So that means this, I mean, what the hell? And we're back. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're building the new Element Enduro Comfox chassis. And this is a builder's kit. So we could do our own wheels and tires, body, all that stuff. So we're going to go ahead and get started on this and get right into it. Uh, this is a carbon, flat rail carbon ch chassis. And let's take a quick look at First thing is we need to assemble the chassis and some chassis braces. So it looks like we need a bag one and two. There's bag two. Bag one is the chassis rails. There's the rest of them. Set the box off to the side here so we can get right into it when we need. Got our driver, got our bits. So I would say that I usually say I'm really excited to build a build. I wouldn't say I'm not excited to build this one, but I have no expectations of what this is. For a lot of my previous builds or other, I know what I'm getting into. <clears throat> I know what this is, it's a comp chassis, but I have seen no reviews or anything on the build or any opinions from anybody else at this point. So we're just going into this blind, which is the way I like it, so that I can give you my opinion on how I think this thing was built. Um, like I said in my unboxing video, I'm going to say it again, I'm building this chassis because I built the other two production comp kits out there, which is the Vanquish VRD Carbon and the Axial SEX10 Pro. Both the kits were very nice to build. Um, one was portal, one was straight axle. They both served their purpose. This truck here is a portal, and so uh, we'll see how that does. This is Element's first attempt at a portal axle, so we'll also see how that goes. Being on a lightweight comp truck, it might be okay, but we'll see how it handles everything. Um, I would like to say that I'm not a big comp guy. I want a comp. I don't really do it that much. So when you're, if you're looking at me for advice on where to go comp or rules and stuff, that's not, that's not me. I'm a guy that likes to build trucks. I use them. I take them out. I run them on trails. I do, but I haven't comped. I will, I do want to comp, but in my area, you have to travel a little ways to go find these comps. And I'm too busy with my... With the business to be able to do that so um, one day i'll I'm sure i'll get out and be able to do it but for now i just really like to build trail trucks i really like to build these comp trucks they're very capable and my experience in this is going to be quality of kit how nice are the instructions how well did it go together you know my kind of opinion comparing it to the other two so anyway with that being said on what we're doing in this video this is going to be the assembly um, and I will give my opinion in a different video after it's built and we give it a run. Um, but this video should be pretty much the full build of the chassis. Okay, so it doesn't say right away in the manual how to identify which is front and rear, except you can see here. One is longer than the other, so the only way I have to compare it is this bar also goes in the rear, so my guess is, is the two rear ones are going to be the same length, and we have the long one for the front, and the orientation, so already it doesn't show, it's a little detail that shows, it doesn't show the length of crossbar. I'm not going to throw Loctite on these just yet, when we finally cinch the chassis down all the way after the skid and stuff is in. I will pull these and, re and go back and lock tight these. It says to leave them loose, and I don't know how far I'm going to get, so I'm not going to do that right away. So I am kind of curious who designed this. <clears throat> I've heard 
I mean, there's rumblings that Associate doesn't really have any designers in the U.S. anymore like they used to. And Associated Element RC is owned by Thunder Tiger, which is a Taiwanese manufacturer. So I'm guessing most of this stuff is being designed. Maybe the thoughts and ideas are coming from the U.S., but the actual designers are from Taiwan. So don't know that for sure. Just curious if that's the case. Okay, there we go. Everything is loose. It's not super tight. We're going to go back and lock tight everything down. And so that's as far as we've got so far. That was step one. They said to start building the chassis, but then it immediately goes into the transmission. So let's pull that bag. That's bag three. These two. Those are going to give us our most overdrive. These are the other two gears. They are labeled on here which ones to use, 2852. This one is labeled So that wasn't too bad. Transmission went together pretty smooth. Uh, kind of a boring process. I want to make sure I got the overdrive in there correctly so I wasn't talking very much during that. Uh, so anything, everything went pretty smooth putting the transmission together so it looks like that part's all done. Um, it shows to bolt the motor in. I haven't got my power system figured out yet. Probably just run uh, a two-in-one in this truck I would guess. Um, yeah, probably just run a Fusion Pro, maybe even a Fusion SE, probably a Pro. So we're not going to put the motor and pinion gear and stuff on yet. Now it says we're on to the axles. Okay, we are on to front portal axle. I really like this tray. This is my... My build tray has all the compartments in the front. It's looking pretty nasty. I've done some painting on it, but this thing's been around for a while. So we have the centered gears, kind of a spiral. They're not cut, but they're a spiral. 
<clears throat> this is probably one of the weak points of this axle. This gear could be machined. I'm not totally sure what how this one is made. I'm guessing this could be a centered gear and then they machine this section here. So I don't know how strong this thing is. I mean, that's a tiny little gear. I've heard that they can be weak, but never had problems with the element that we've had. Universals. Those look heavy duty enough. They should hold up fine. Again, centered gears, but this is pretty common for a lot of vehicles to use this type of gear, so those will probably hold up just fine. Here. So, we've got to this point. Now, I did make a little bit of a mistake. I might show up in the video, it may not. But I had the knuckles flipped upside down for whatever reason with the camera in my way. I wasn't paying attention, so I had to redo, and I ended up swapping everything over. So, I was correct on the, the lines here. You have a, a point, a line, an arrow right here on the axle, and then these two lines, and you, one is square with the axle tube. And the other one is slightly, you know, a little bit of caster angle in there. And so that's the line that I put it on. That's probably where it should be. So it's like this instead of straight. Um, the reason I noticed my was when I was started putting on the four length bars. I'm like, something. what am I doing? Everything's upside down. So I fixed it. So if it shows a little bit in the video, everything's been fixed and put on correctly. This isn't a how-to. This is a, a build video. And you're learning with me, I guess. And uh, so the axle's pretty much done for the front axle, except for the steering bars. So you do it like that. You double stack them. This one sticks towards the rear. And then you have one in the front, like so. And then on the other side, you just put one in the front, facing forward. Okay, so we got the steering linkage on there. Everything appears to be right. I gotta mount up the servo and axle mount. You can't really see, you can barely see it in the picture, but it shows you to put the little, so it fits around the truss there. All right, so we got the front axle all done. Servo and axle mount is in. I'm pretty sure there was two eight millimeter screws missing from the parts bag that I don't see anywhere. So hard to say at this point if I put a screw in the wrong spot, but I don't think I did. So we're gonna build the rear axle next. It's in bag five and we're gonna time lapse this one because it's exactly the same as the last one. So we're just going to buzz through it real quick, and then when we get to the linkage part, I'll show you how all that fastens down. And we're back. This is the next day. Last night, you seen me get the axles built, and that was enough for that night, and so we're on to the next night. And we've already, I didn't want to film building links because the links are excessively boring to watch how to build, 
um, and these links took a lot of attention to looking at the diagrams to get all the bends the angles of the links and everything in the right position and it it would it, it took forever to make sure I got everything laid out so we can get them all correct didn't have to undo or redo anything and measure all the lengths so I've got all the links already built um, you just got to really follow the pictures watch how everything's angled the angles of the rod ends um, the only thing I'm running into is that there should be four straight ends like this one it's just straight but I can only find three so I'm missing one to do the link and uh, they give me three of these they give us three of these trees of rod ends but with only one straight on each one right here well I've already used them because this set right here uses two and the steering link is supposed to use two, but I can only find three. I don't know what's up with that. I'm gonna have to find something that'll work when I put the servo in, because I don't have the servo yet, so not really sure what's going on there. They do have some shorts, but the picture doesn't indicate that it's a short. It looks like a long one, so we'll have to figure that out. So we're right now bolting the links to the chassis, doing some steering link, and uh, to the axles. All right, so one thing I'm noticing is the skid. You have to put these set screws all the way through, and that's what holds the link in, is these set screws. But just trying to get the screw to screw through this part, of the, it sounds like it's binding really bad. So it's freaking me out. I don't wanna mess up the skid. So we're gonna go ahead and spiral tap. We're gonna thread, um, tap the holes so that we uh, don't have any issues. Um, I don't want to ruin anything or get anything stuck in there and ruin the skid. I mean, it was really tight. It was starting to bind up bad. I even put grease on it, thinking that maybe they screwed up by putting black grease there instead of telling you to put black grease on those screws, which I really do think that was their intention to do. I think they made the diagram wrong because not on any of the other rods does it say to use grease. So I think that was a bit of a mistake. But I even tried to grease and didn't like it. So three millimeter spiral tap should work just great. So anyway, I installed. So there's a couple things I've noticed on the manual. It says to bolt the, in the middle of doing the links, it says to bolt the skid, bolt the skid to the transmission, but then set it in the tran into the chassis, but yet you can't put it in the chassis because it doesn't say to screw it into the chassis, so therefore it's just falling out. Then down here it says to install the links to the lower part of the skid, which is right here. So you're installing these. I don't know why they show it in the chassis while you're doing it because you can't really do that. Because it's so anyway. Um, so what I also figured out is the set screws that you have to use. These 16 millimeter set screws that go all the way through and hold those links in. Um, it's almost. I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it's a little sketchy to, to put it in there. 
with just some grease. Also, I noticed here, it says use black grease on this rod end. I think they meant use black grease on these set screws because none of the other rod ends say use grease just on this diagram here. So I believe they that is an, uh, a mistake. It's supposed to say put grease on these before you screw them into the Delrin skid. Even with grease, it sounded way too bound up, and I was thinking I might be busting the tip of my screwdriver off or stripping it out. So I grabbed my three millimeter spiral tap, and I tapped this outer section on all sides. Uh, now, tap this outer section on all sides, and now the set screws go in smooth as butter, and then this is all sort of gonna be pre-tapped for the screws to hold the whole thing in. So I think that's the best way to do it. If anybody watches this video, I highly, highly recommend tap the Dell wrench kid before you get too far into it. You might get yourself in trouble with that one. Now we're going to go ahead and install the rear links, and then we're going to bolt it into the chassis. All right, we're on night three of putting this chassis together. Um, it isn't a long build. It'd probably go pretty quick, but when you, you know, I work. I get home late. I work on a little bit each night. So, and I like to take my time when I'm building stuff, just to make sure we get everything correct. Um, there was a couple things that you might have noticed in the video if I still show them, depending on how I cut this up. I had the links mounted down too low here, and I think that's partially due to I got the camera here in front of me. The instructions are clear over there, and uh, the images are a little dark, so sometimes it's you really got to look pretty close to see where the lines tell you to put the holes. So I just had it misjudged. So I just misjudged it and had this link, these two upper links, down here. Moved them forward, was able to hook everything up. I'm not sure about the, the geometry of all this stuff. It looks like the rear's right to the pictures I've seen, but the front looks a little off. So, so I'm going to take my calipers, remeasure all the links on the whole truck before we're done and just make sure that I'm within the realm of what they say I should be and then we'll go from there. Um, I think I'm pretty close, um, but I didn't caliper everything. I kind of just did it by eyeball because my calipers for home had died. They have a brand new set at work that I will bring home and we'll get this all calibrated up before we finish everything. Um, for now... So we got the sliders on, we're two, and we're supposed to put together the drive shafts. This one should go pretty easy. I have enjoyed this, this build. It actually hasn't been that bad. There's a few things that kind of were goofy in the manual. I will go over that in the end of the video, exactly all of what they are. Probably already went over it throughout the video. And skipping from night to night. Uh, you kind of forget a little bit of what you said, blah, blah, blah. So when I edit it, I'll try to chop it all up the best I can. I'm not totally good at this, but I try. All right, so we got some pretty simple drive shafts. So we got drive shaft. Okay, so here's another thing in the manual that is confusing us these drive shafts. It tells you the drive shaft length, front 33. Female number two is 33, male 48, rear 33, 33, 48, but these male pieces are not the same length. One is clearly longer, so they can't be the same length because they only give you two. So I don't know if I'm reading this wrong. It also doesn't say, here it says 33 and 33. So I'm guessing those would be the same size for both of them. But if you look here, this rear one, this 33, 48, 33, 33, 48, 33. But in this picture, this drive shaft rear piece here is clearly longer. So that means this, I mean, what the hell? So I'm going to build it the way I think it's done. One, I think the rear drive shaft gets a long piece, a long piece, and a short piece, and the front gets a short, a short, and a short. I don't, I don't know. 
that's a kind of a, a weird, probably the biggest thing I've seen in it because it doesn't say what length these are. I mean, I can measure them, but it says they're 33 front and rear. But this piece is not, I'm guessing, I don't know. You could, you can't even do, and I want to point out something. You can't even do four short ones because there's one long one and three short ones. So, I don't know. I think that's a little bit of an error on that part of the manual. So we're just going to build it how I think it should go, and I'm sure that will be just fine. So we need to put the... Uh, uh, that part in there. All right, guys, now we're moving on to the shocks. This is one of the boringest parts of the build that I hate to film. Uh, let's uh, open them up. Take a look at them. Team Associated, which owns Element RC, has always had really good shocks. Um, of course, some of the stuff they make has changed over the years, but think they still know how to make a shock. All right, guys, we got the shocks all built. As you can see, they're installed. Shock building on camera is super boring because it takes a long time to clip all the clips on and the E-clips and everything. All the parts were there. Everything went really well. They were probably the easiest to bleed shocks that I've done recently. 
Um, I haven't built any of the Element RC shocks, so if you're familiar with the Element, I'm sure that they were easy. Team Associated has always built really good shocks, and so that was no surprise that they're nice and silky smooth. Everything went really smooth. So with that being said, uh, the rest of the kit went together pretty well. There was a few errors in the book that I have mentioned throughout the video. Um, little tiny things like there was some missing screws up front and then just some lack of information here or there. And then I also made some mistakes. Uh, I had the axle flipped, just wasn't paying attention, but we fixed that in the front. I missed a bearing in the transmission. That was easy to rec I fat seen the bearing and I was like, okay, popped it open, popped it in real quick, just an oversight. And that kind of stuff happens when you're building kits. So no issues. Truck hasn't been ran with any of that stuff missing. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get enough footage of putting the axles together because the front axle was the one that I was trying to do the long form on. And um, that was the one that was upside down. So <clears throat> instead of showing you the upside down axle, I did a time lapse on the rear one. And the rear one went really well no problems there i did one little tiny tip is the pins for the hexes and the pins for the gears come in the same bag so when you open them up it's easy to mix them up i luckily got them all right except for one went back changed it out no problem so it's just uh, paying attention to your build as you go and noticing things that might be incorrect but you're going to want to get the right size pins the pins for the gears and the portals are bigger than the pins for your hexes so just note that um, transmission went together really smooth the only thing I don't like is this plastic spur gear adapter I don't know if it picks it up on camera but the spur gear wobbles a little bit they do make an factory team aluminum version I'm ordering that I'm also gonna um, order some aluminum hexes from STRC um, they make some with set screws, so I'm going to do that. Also, you can notice that I have installed, we tightened up, we did all the chassis braces front to rear, went through and loctited everything so the chassis is completely done. We also installed the servo, we did an EcoPower WP250T. Um, for the money, 110 bucks, this servo is awesome. Uh, it puts out Decent amount of power, almost 800 ounces, about 759. Um, good servo, should work fine in here for what I'm doing for now. I'm doing some testing. If I decide that this needs a little bit more, we'll stick in like a Reefs 900 or 800. Um, we also went with the Hobbywing SE. Um, I went with that because it was easy to get and just worked out that that was the one I wanted to try. I have the Pro in a couple trucks. I have the Holmes Hobbies V3 and a couple others. I haven't tried an SE, so I thought it would be a good place to try it. Put it in another truck. I didn't put it in here because it's cheap for any specific reason. I put it in here because it's something I want to check out and we can swap out very easily. We're also running the Vanquish um, ready to run radio system. I just picked up another receiver and we're running that radio system in this. It's a four channel, it works really good. Um, it just has a very slow throw and a reverse, but that's another thing. Um, build wise, I would say quality of the kit is pretty good. I mean, you can see that these pieces here are kind of just stamped and bent. So the machine quality of them isn't perfect, little scratches and stuff, that's okay. Um, I don't mind that whatsoever. Everything fit really well. Um, besides missing the two screws up front, everything went together pretty well. The manual we know is hit and miss with some of these Team Associated or, or Element kits, but it wasn't the worst I've ever done. There is a lot worse manuals out there than this one, and if you've ever built before, it shouldn't really be a problem. Um, links were really hard to get lined up. You can see the links have all the little different bends on link ends and also the links. So you got to pay a close attention to the angles of everything. That's where I would say you should really pay attention to getting it lined up, getting your pivot balls 
in the correct direction. There's a lot of thinking going on with that one. Um, I did install a treel diff cover because there is no brass available for this axle yet. So I wanted to get a little bit of weight up front, which this is a little compared to what we could do, but I might do brass rings in the wheels. And speaking of wheels, um, I do have some wheels picked that I think will work perfect on this for now. All right, guys, there's the wheels and tires. We got the limited edition dark earth vanquish wheels on here for now. They may go on another truck, but they kind of go pretty decent with the bronze accents, kind of the similar color. We also got the Battleborn rings on there, the clear. They look pretty sweet. Um, there's no weights in these right now, but I might do weights in the front. We're also doing Aztec Proline Aztecs in Predator compound with the stock foams for now. Uh, we're going to give it a run, but I do think that these tires being so soft and squishy, we probably need to do two stage foams in here for sure. So that's probably one thing we're going to upgrade. Um, battery wise, we are going to run Gen Z's Tattoo. 1300. This is the kind of packs that I like to run in these comp rigs. Something that's not too big. Um, okay, fits nice and something that's not too big that just fits nice on the side of the. You can even go smaller. You could do it 850, 450. Um, this should work out pretty well for that. And then for the final touch of this build, for now, I wanted to do a cab only body, but. This body, this chassis does not come with optional body mounts to mount. Uh, there's extra holes here and different places, which would be easy to figure out. But because I had a body handy, I went ahead and painted up the Vanquish Stance body. Um, turned out pretty good. Actually tried to do a very fairly simple one. Turned out better than I thought. You can see I did a little bit of a play on the Vanquish VRD stance by uh, using the stickers that come with the body and we replace the VRD part with the element and then the side actually just worked out with the color scheme it was supposed to just be red and this gold anodized Tamiya paint and then it all just kind of fell together so we went that that route and I am very happy with the look um, should perform very well um, the body is as far down as it will go on the chassis. On the back it's all the way down to the brace. So this brace in the manual goes up here. I moved it to back here to get the body mounts a little further back. If you mount it where it is stock it's clear up here. I didn't think that was enough support for a body so I moved it back on the shock tower to the reverse it's as low as it can go. You can go lower with the shock mounting holes if you want, but you'll need to do that before you drill the holes in your body. I um, think the thing turned out pretty good. All in all, a brief description of the build. I think the quality of the kit was decent. Now, we the, the gears could be subject if they're strong enough or not. That's something to be determined, but the build of the kit was pretty good. The manual had some missing things, there was a couple things here or there, but uh, overall I would say the fit and finish of everything uh, I was happy with. Um, everything seems to be fine. I didn't see anything that's like really concerning that it's going to break or why did they do this. I know that the axles, the way that they're keyed, there's a few questions, so if they're going to hold up or not, that's something that you don't know until they get out there and a lot of people have run them. But for now, fit and finish of the kit was fine and I would recommend this kit to somebody who's an Element fan that wants to build it. I, I don't see anything wrong with it. I think it will probably compete fairly well with the other ones. We will have to see if it's as good as the VRD Carbon, the other portal axle kit out there. Um, we'll just have to see. So guys, Hope you like this video. I tried to keep it short and sweet the best I could. These build videos can get very long. And like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to always support your local hobby shop, which is where I purchased all of these items. Thanks for watching.